Deep Trouble by R.L. Stein Chapter 25 The air became very still. The kidnapper's boat sat gently on the calm, glassy waters of the cove. What happened to all the mermaids? Sheena whispered. I shrugged. There was no sign of them. I imagined them swimming way down below the surface, hiding. Suddenly, at the sight of the kidnapper's boat, I saw ripples in the water. Slowly, silently, our dinghy glided toward the boat. I stared at the ripples, trying to see what was making them. Then I saw a flash of blonde hair in the moonlight. The mermaid, I whispered. There she is. She was floating in the water, tied to the back of the kidnapper's boat. They must not have a tank to keep her in, Dr. D whispered excitedly. Lucky for us. Suddenly, we saw other figures rippling the water. Mermaids arced up, circling the captured mermaid. I saw tail fins raised like giant fans. I saw hands reach across around the mermaid, hands tugging at the rope that held her. The waters tossed quietly as the figures worked. The mermaids are setting her free, I whispered. What are we going to do? Sheena asked. We'll just make sure she gets away safely, Dr. D replied. Then we'll slip away. The kidnappers will never know we were here. We watched the mermaid struggle with the rope as our dinghy washed up against the kidnapper's boat. Come on, mermaids, Sheena urged under her breath. Hurry. Maybe they need some help, I said. Dr. D began to steer toward the mermaids. I gasped as a light flared on the kidnapper's boat. A match set flame to a torch. An angry voice boomed. What do you think you're doing? Chapter 26 I ducked away as the flaming torch was thrust in my face. Behind the torch I could see the kidnapper glaring down at me. He had quickly pulled on his black mask. It covered only the top of his face. I heard a clambering sound, cries of surprise. Alexander and the other three kidnappers appeared on the deck. How did you get here? demanded the man with the torch. Why aren't you dead? We've come for the mermaid, Dr. D called up to him. You can't keep her here. The torch swung past my head. I stood up in the dinghy and took a swipe at it, trying to knock it into the water. Billy, no! cried Dr. D. The kidnapper pulled the torch away. I fell forward in the dinghy, toppling over on Sheena. Give us back the mermaid, Dr. D demanded. Finders keepers, the kidnapper muttered. You've made a long trip for nothing. And now look, your boat is on fire. He lowered the torch to the dinghy and set it aflame. Chapter 27 The flames flared up, bright orange and yellow against the black-blue sky. They spread quiet, quickly across the front of the dinghy. Sheena uttered a terrified scream and tried to back away from the flames. In a panic, she started to leap into the water, but Dr. D pulled her back. Don't leave the boat, you'll drown. The fire crackled. The bright flames shot higher. Dr. D grabbed a yellow life jacket from the bottom of the dinghy and started frantically beating out the fire. Billy, get a life jacket, he yelled. Sheena! Find a bucket. Throw water on the flames. Hurry. I found a life jacket and beat out the flames. Sheena dumped seawater on them as fast as she could. Over the crackling flames, I heard Alexander shout, Get the mermaid aboard. Let's get out of here. Dr. D, I cried. They're getting away. Then I heard the kidnappers yelling, The mermaid. Where's the mermaid? I turned to the side of the boat. The mermaid was gone. Her friends had freed her. One of the kidnappers reached down from his boat and grabbed me. What did you do with the mermaid? He demanded. Let him go, shouted Dr. D. I tried to squirm away from the kidnapper. He held me tight. Then I saw another kidnapper swing a club at Dr. D's head. Dr. D dodged the club. The kidnapper tried to hit him in the stomach. Dr. D dodged again. I kicked and squirmed. Sheena tugged at the kidnapper's hands, trying to help me escape. The third kidnapper picked her up by the wrists and threw her onto the floor of the dinghy. Let go of the kids, pleaded Dr. D. Alexander, help us! Alexander didn't move from his spot on the deck. He stood with his brawny arms crossed in front of him, calmly watching the fight. The flames had nearly been quenched, but they suddenly flared up again. Sheena, the fire! I cried. Put out the fire! She grabbed the bucket and poured seawater everywhere. One of the kidnappers kicked the bucket from her hands. It landed in the water with a splash. Sheena picked up a life jacket and beat the last of the flames out. 
drop down into their boat and toss them into the water. I heard a kidnapper shout above, up above. A man started to lower himself into our dinghy. But suddenly he lurched forward, his arms flailing. He let out a cry of surprise as his boat began to rock violently to the left. It looked as if he had been slammed by a huge wave. The kidnappers cried out as their boat began to rock back and forth, slowly at first, then violently, gripping the sides of the dinghy. I watched them clinging to the rail, screaming in confusion and surprise. Dr. D slowly stood up, trying to see what was happening. The boat tossed violently, as if bucking tall waves. The mermaids. I could see them now. They had surrounded the kidnapper's ship and were rocking it hard. Hard. Harder. The kidnappers hung on helplessly. Mission accomplished, Dr. D cried happily. He started up the motor and we roared off. Turning back, I could see the boat tilting and rocking in the water. And I could see our mermaid swimming free behind the other mermaids in the shimmering waves. She got away, I cried. She's free. I hope she'll be all right, said Sheena. We'll look for her tomorrow, said Dr. D as he steered us back to the sea lab. We know where to find her now. Sheena glanced at me. I glanced back. Oh, no, I thought. After all this, it can't be true. Is Dr. D going to catch the mermaid again and give her to the zoo? Sheena and I met the g in the galley the next morning. Since Alexander was gone, we had to fix our own breakfasts. Do you think the mermaid went back to the lagoon? asked Sheena. Probably, I replied. That's where she lives. She spooned some cereal into her mouth and chewed with a thoughtful look on her face. Sheena, I said, if someone gave you a million dollars... Would you show them where the mermaid lives? No, replied Sheena. Not if they wanted to capture her. Me neither, I said. That's what I don't get. Dr. D is a great guy. I just can't believe he'd... I'd stopped. I heard a noise. The sound of a motor. Sheena listened. She heard it, too. We dropped our spoons and ran up on deck. Dr. D was standing on the deck, staring out to sea. A boat was approaching. A white boat with marina zoo stenciled on the side in large letters. The zoo people, I said to Sheena. They're here. What would our uncle do? I wondered with growing dread. Would he tell them where the mermaid was? Would he accept the million dollars? Sheena and I ducked behind the cockpit. We watched the marina zoo boat tie up beside the Cassandra. I recognized Mr. Showalter and Miss Wickman. Mr. Showalter tossed a rope to Dr. D. Miss Wickman jumped aboard. The zoo people smiled and shook Dr. D's hand. He nodded at them solemnly. We had word from the fishermen on Santa Anita that you found the mermaid, Mr. Showalter said. We're ready to take her with us now. Miss Wickman opened her briefcase and pulled out a slender envelope. Here's a check for one million dollars, Dr. Deep, she said, smiling. We've made it out to you and the Cassandra Research Lab. She held out the check to my uncle. I peered out from behind the cockpit. Please don't take it, Dr. D, I pleaded silently. Please don't take the check. Thank you very much, my uncle said. He reached out a hand and took the check from her. Chapter 28 A million dollars means a great deal to me and my work, Dr. D said. Your zoo has been very generous. That's why I'm sorry I have to do this. He raised the envelope and tore it in half. The two zoo people gasped in surprise. I can't take the money, Dr. D said. Just what are you saying, Dr. Deep? Mr. Showalter demanded. You sent me on a wild goose chase, my uncle replied. I have searched these waters thoroughly ever since you left. With my equipment, I searched every inch of the lagoon and all the surrounding waters. And I am now more convinced than ever before that mermaids do not exist. Yay! I screamed to myself. I wanted to jump up and down and cheer my head off, but I stayed hidden with Sheena behind the cockpit. But what about that fisherman's stories? Miss Wickman protested. The local fishermen have told mermaid stories for years, Dr. D told her. I think they believe they're really seen mermaids rising through the mist on foggy days. But what they are seen are only fish, or dolphins, or manatees, or even swimmers, because mermaids don't exist. They're fantasy creatures. Mr. Showalter and Miss Wickman both sighed in disappointment. Are you sure about this? Mr. Showalter asked. Completely sure. My uncle replied firmly. My equipment is very sensitive. It can pick up the tiniest minnow. We respect your opinion, Dr. Deep, Mr. Showalter said with some sadness. 
You're the leading expert on exotic sea creatures. That's why we came to you in the first place. Thank you, said Dr. D. Then I hope you'll take my advice and drop your hunt for a mermaid. I guess we'll have to, said Miss Wickman. Thank you for trying, Dr. Deep. They all shook hands. Then the zoo people got back onto their boat and motored away. The coast was clear. Sheena and I came bursting out of our hiding place. Dr. D! cried Sheena, throwing her arms around him. You're the greatest! A wide grin spread over Dr. D's face. Thanks, guys, he said. From now on, none of us will say anything to anyone about mermaids. Is that a deal? It's a deal, Sheena instantly agreed. Deal, I said. We all shook hands. The mermaid was our secret. I swore I'd never mention the mermaid to anyone, but I wanted to see her one last time. I wanted to say goodbye. After lunch, Sheena and Dr. D went to their cabins to nap. We had been up for most of the night, after all. I pretended to take a nap, too. But once they were asleep, I sneaked out of my cabin and slipped into the bright blue water. I swam over to the, the lagoon to search for the mermaid. The sun was high in a pale blue sky. It glowed down on the still lagoon waters, making them glitter as if covered in gold. Mermaid, where are you? I wondered. I was just past the reef when I felt a playful tug on my leg. Sheena, I thought. Had she followed me again? I spun around to catch her. No one there. Seaweed, probably, I thought. I kept swimming. A few seconds later, I felt the tug again. Harder this time. Hey, it must be the mermaid, I told myself. I turned once again to search for her. The water rippled. Mermaid, I called. A head popped out of the water. A gigantic, slimy, dark green head with one enormous eye and a mouthful of jagged teeth. The sea monster, I shrieked. The sea monster! Would they believe me this time?